Today on The Transplant Helper, we're going to be discussing the very real and sometimes even scary possibility of you losing your Social Security disability benefits only one year post-transplant. Now, if that's something that you're concerned about, maybe even something that scares you to death, go ahead and stay tuned. Hey folks, welcome to Transplant Helper again today. My name is Jim Merle. Now, honestly, I receive a ton of questions here on the channel all surrounding Social Security Disability Benefits. Now, I'm not exactly sure why that is because I'll remind you again, I'm not an expert in this field. I'm certainly not a disability lawyer of any sort. However, I am someone who has been there and is currently doing that. Now, with that said, by the way, if you're not already aware of it, I have an entire playlist here on the channel all surrounding the Social Security Disability Benefit process and everything that goes along with it, whether it be how to get your disability benefit on the first try, how to really deliver that disability benefit, how to avoid the shame of being on disability, even things such as how to build your case for disability. I've certainly got those videos here on the channel and I'll be sure to link them up here in the corners as well as in the description below this video. So you can check that out toward the end of the video. But anyway, as I do receive a lot of questions surrounding this particular topic as a whole, a lot of times the questions that I receive are people who are concerned with having benefit and then at one point losing those benefits. And so I just want to stop and address a very specific issue with that, and that is the possibility of losing your Social Security Disability benefits only one year post-transplant. And this comes up because of a lot of questions, and specifically a question I received just the other day about this exact matter. Well, let me say in the beginning, I totally understand why someone might get the idea that they're going to lose their benefits. And that's because if you read your agreement initially concerning those benefits as it's connected with your transplant, you probably were told at some point that you would be up for review after one year of receiving your transplant. And basically, to be honest with you, that means if there's a review, there is the potential for losing that benefit. But really, that's not written there for that reason. It's really written to give you a little bit of comfort, a little bit of knowledge in knowing that you're going to maintain your benefits for one year. So you don't have to be in a panic. You don't have to be trying to dig and scratch necessarily to jump back into work because you're going to lose your benefits quickly. You've actually got a year in there built into the process just for the healing process. So understand, yes, that you potentially could lose them, but it's not a given. Now, it is the case, as just stated though, you will be up for a review from the Social Security Administration at that one year anniversary mark. Now, that doesn't have to be a very big deal. As a matter of fact, that initial review basically just is those, those uh, administrators contacting your clinicians, contacting your team, and asking them if you're ready for work if you're still under their care and if so are you ready for work now if you've done a good job in communicating with your team along that way you're probably going to be approved to continue on those benefits for another period of time and that's where it really comes in it's on you as well as on your team on whether or not you're going to maintain those benefits past that one year mark and it comes down to really good communication honest but yet at the same time sincere communication with your team is the key hands down without a doubt you know it is the case that many of us most of us i would say as a matter of fact we need to get back to work after transplant and that's not necessarily a health decision that's a financial decision because we just don't make it very well typically on just that social security benefit unless someone else in your home is working making a living having a career more than likely you're living on rice and beans and beans and rice if you're on social security benefit and that alone you're not going to make it very well on that so because of that a lot of us kind of get in a rush get in a tizzy to get back into the workforce very quickly and to try to get off of those benefits and by the way let me insert right here this video is not for someone who does not deserve benefit whether it be getting it initially neither is it for someone to maintain a benefit that they do not need okay so if you're someone who's just trying to mooch off the system trying to bum some benefits so you don't have to work maybe you're lazy get off my video I don't need you here but I don't think that's the case for most of you here most of your honest people like I hope I am in trying to get something that we actually need now moving on in the process the key to this is to go into your doctor's office to your clinic visits every time and yes we're excited with our new transplant yes we're hopeful for the possibility of getting back to work 
but at the same time we've got to be completely honest with ourselves and honest with those doctors you know when they run you through for example a heart transplant when they run us through our cats they do the cats they get the numbers the pressures when they do the biopsies if they find zero rejection at the end of that year they may judge just based on the numbers just based on the test that we're doing very well and they may equate that meaning by that our teams may equal that to the fact that we're ready to go back to work or ready to go back to whatever it is and that might not be the case the numbers may all be there but as far as the way you physically feel may not and you may not quite be up to that level so at the first year review that's what it comes down to how do you really feel what do the doctors think about what's happened with the numbers in the process and all they're being asked to do is to be asked to address the social security administration your medical team is and just just mark check boxes pretty much are they ready to go back to work or are they still under your care and of course they can check no with that and you can carry on for another period of time however keep in mind that you're still going to be brought under review from time to time almost randomly pretty much from here on out okay so there's going to be those constant reviews and you need to be honest with your team the whole time both on the positive side of things to let them know how you're doing and on the negative side of things to let them know what you're not able to do okay so to put that down big plain and straight now with that said there are people who actually lose their benefit at that one year mark and it could be either that they're doing very well and they've not communicated with a doctor there's also the outside possibility there and this is very 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 rare do you hear how many varies i use right there but this is very rare but there's actually the possibility maybe that you've come under review because someone has reported you maybe they've seen you out you know hiking 20 miles or mowing your lawn with a with a pair of scissors or something and they they turned you in okay that's very rare we see that on television and by the way honestly if you're the good citizen who sees someone abuse using social security disability benefit and you turn them in more power to you okay but for the honest people who don't deserve that who really need that benefit don't even worry about that okay that's not a possibility just be sure that you stay friends with your friends and you keep your enemies at a distance nothing to worry about there but the most common reason for losing your disability other than that really comes down to the fact that you've gone back to work okay if if you're less than a year or say a year out of transplant and you make the choice you make the choice to go back to work whether it be for financial reasons for emotional reasons just whatever maybe you're just used to working if you choose to go back to work in either a part-time or full-time situation and the social security administration sees that they could possibly pull your benefit okay now with that said, there is what's known as a ticket to work program. That's where you actually let Social Security Disability know that you want to go into the workforce to some extent, most likely part time. But you let them know that you want to go into the workforce, kind of test the waters, get your feet wet again, and to see how things go. And if you go about that in the right way, you can actually maintain your benefit while working a certain number of hours or making a certain amount of money i don't know exactly what that is that's not what this video is about but anyway there's a ticket to work program and if you're interested in going back to work that is the way to go with this contact them let you let them know you want a ticket to work and then go try the workforce but if you just jump in and you don't notify them at all and you just start working at your old job or you pick up a new job or whatever and they start being notified that you're back on the payroll scene that you're back to paying in social security and they discover that you've not notified them let me tell you straight up you're pretty much done okay they're going to mark you as deemable for work and you better be ready because you're probably going to have to work you're losing that benefit but you need to be sure that you're ready always contact them whether it's be ticket to work or just i'm really ready but be sure that you're ready for work i've had an entire video here i'll link up here in the corner try to put it in the description below as well concerning how to make the decision on whether or not you're actually ready for work post transplant because you may feel wonderful and great say two months after transplant 
But then if you get to feeling really crummy within that first year, a little bit later than that, and you've already gone back to work and maybe you've already coming up for review to lose those benefits, you could be in huge trouble, okay? So you gotta be sure that you're ready because going in the workforce is actually a little bit harder probably than you remember it. I don't know exactly what your job was. It may be easier than the one I had prior to transplant, but it's not that easy, okay? So just be sure that you're ready. And if you go back to work, let the Social Security Administration know and try to go on that ticket to work program whenever possible. Now, again, I'll add this. If you go to work, I'm saying this loudly, if you go back to work sometime prior to that year being up or right at that one year mark, you better be serious about that because that's going to throw up red flags for them and going to basically tell them, hey, he's good to go. Now, if you get in the workforce and fail at that, that's going to be hard, okay? There is the thing out there, though. Let me add this last level, and I'll, I'll let you off the video. I know you're bored already. But there is the thing out there available, kind of tied to the ticket to work program, but where if you actually go into the workforce, you work less than, I think it's a month. Don't quote me on that, but I think it's if you work less than a month and you have what they call failed attempts at working, meaning you go into the workplace, you work less than a month, you have to quit because you can't make it. You do that a couple of times, that actually works in your favor as far as keeping the benefit because if you have to stand before a judge, you got failed attempts there saying that uh, you weren't able to do it. Now, I'm not telling you to go out and get a job and fail on purpose. Don't do that. But if you've done that, that can actually work in your favor and not against you. So overall, what am I saying? Number one, you do not lose your Social Security Disability Benefit just because you're one year out. You will be reviewed. You gotta get with your doctors and let them know how you feel. And then at that point, uh, from then on, it may be random reviews and it's just gonna be based on your actual health as recorded between your doctors, yourself, and the administration on the other side. That's what it's all about. Now, I think I probably missed a few things in here. If I did, go ahead and comment below this video. Give some of your feedback because it's not about what I teach you as a community. It's about what we teach others and each other, okay? So you're a part of this deal. You're a part of this uh, community that I use to help to advocate, educate, and motivate fellow transplant patients, of which many of you already are, so comment below the video. Let me know your experiences with the review process, with whether or not you lost your benefits, whatever, but be confident in knowing you do have those benefits pretty much promised to you for about a one-year point. If this video has helped you out in any way, how about go ahead and hit that big like button, give me a big thumbs up. That just encourages me to keep making video content similar to this as well as the fact, let me invite you, if you're not already a subscriber to this channel, go ahead and hit the big subscribe button beneath this video. And as you're doing that, maybe even hit the bell notification off beside that. Because I'm gonna be honest with you, YouTube will not show you these videos as they come out, usually two days a week, maybe Tuesday and Thursday at 4 p.m. They won't even notify you of those unless you've already subscribed and hit that little bell. So please hit the bell if you're interested in finding out about each and every one of these videos that come out. It won't aggravate you. It's just the only way you're going to find out, to be honest. But anyway, thank you so much for your time. Let me encourage you. Until next time, all of you, please stay stronger, friends.